Okay, so we're back in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Uh, let's read from uh, verse 8 through uh, verse 10. Ready? Let's read. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Very good. So now, the Apostle Paul is really getting ready to close his letter. Do you remember when we started chapter 3, he said, Kutro. Finally, in chapter 3. But now, he's coming to a place where he really is. He's trying to tie it all together. 이제 한, 한 말씀으로 이제 다 정리를 하려고 그래요. He's trying to put it into one, one final message where he ties it all together. So, in verse 8, he says, Whatever is true, whatever is noble. What is noble in Korean? Noble. Hmm. Well, it's a little bit different than Kyongun. I, I see in, in Korean that it is actually translated as Kyongun Hada, but Kyongun Hada is more like holy, right? <laughs> holy or, or godly. Godly. But noble, noble is more like, you know, Wang Kajo, right? So, you know, if you have a king, a king has sons, and those sons are called princes, or we say in Korean, wangja right? Wangja. And what are the uh, what are the uh, daughters of the king? What are they called? Kongsu. Yeah. Kongju. Uh, I thought you said Kongsu. I was going to say Kongju. Uh, yeah, Kongju, right? So they're princess, right? And this has the term. This has the connotation of noble. Noble. Why? Kangju nun. Kangju ku jum, bora uraka jum. Tedoga nop janayo. Attitude is, is, is high, right? They're wise, right? They're above the. They act different, right? Wang janun. Wang janun to he a, a, a prince. A prince doesn't behave like a beggar. 거지처럼 행동을 하지 않잖아요. 배가 보더라 해도 배가 보다 소리는 안 해요. 콩주는 불편하더라 해도 불편하다고 말을 안 해요. Why? Because they're children of the king. They don't succumb to little pain. They don't succumb to little things. They are bigger than little things. And so whatsoever is noble. The Apostle Paul is reminding us that we're children of the king. Princes and princesses, if you will, right? Children of the king. right? We don't get caught up in the little things. We don't get caught up in the little things. The Apostle Paul here is encouraging. He's kyongyo He's kwanmyon haguiso. He's trying to encourage or challenge you to think on things that are true. What is true? What is true? In one way, we can say the opposite of those things that are false. Whatsoever things are true, right? Whatsoever things are true. Right. Real. 
not based upon my feelings, not based upon my opinion, not based upon my culture, not based upon my upbringing, not based upon my ethnic background, but whatsoever things are true, real, sashirsang, hmm? real, right? Chamdengo, right? That's what the Apostle Paul says, think on those things. Don't think on foolish things. 어리 속인 것을 생각하지 말라고. 오늘 이거 내일 없어지는 것도 거기다가 이제 어? 생각하지 말라고. Don't, don't let your mind be occupied with temporal things. But whatever is true. Do you know whatever is true will last forever. Whatever is false will fail. It will dry up. It will go away. What is true will last forever. Whatever is right. Right. 어른 것을. Right? Whatever is right. What, what does that mean, whatever is right? How do I know what's right in this world? How do I know? How do I know? Kim Sol, how do I know what's right? 이것이 옳은 것인가? 저것이 옳은 것인가? By law. By law. By what? Law. By the word? By the Lord or by the word? Yeah. By the law. By the law. Ah, by the law. I understand. In one sense, yes. By the word. If you mean by the Torah or the word, yes, that's true, right? By the word of God. That's what we know is true or not. That's what we know is right or not. That's also what we know is true. And that's also what we know is noble. So whatsoever things God has said, think on those things, right? Whatever is pure, what does pure mean? 순수하다는 거, 순수한 거, right? Sometimes we think of a pure, we think of something dirty, we say, oh, that's not pure. That's not the idea. Sometimes we think of something used and not used. If it's not used, it's pure. No, that's not what it means. Pure means 순수하다. Means pure in the sense of single. Single, 하나. Why do we call something 순금? Why do we say 한국에는 순금이다? 순, 아, 이것이는 순금이다. 순금이라고 말하는 거 다른 금도 순금 아니에요? 순금 아니죠. 비교적으로 이거는 순금이다. 왜? Why is it? 다른 쇠가 없는 거잖아요. It has no other metal in it, right? It's only gold. It's only gold. Do you know, uh, in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 22. Would you read that for me, brother? Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 22. Very important verse of scripture. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 22. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse, verse 22. 22. Uh, your silver has become dross. Your choice wine is diluted with water. Mm. What else? Is that it? Ta. Hang, Hanjur? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hangul Ham Mund Yugo Boseo. So it's not pure. And what the what the prophet Isaiah is trying to tell the children of Israel, you're not thinking on those things that are pure, that are single, that are from the word of God. Right? That's not what you're thinking about. And your poduju, your wine, it's mixed with water. If something is mixed with water, it, it loses its power, right? If, as a, as a very bad example, the, the doctor gives you some medicine, it's mulyak, and you look at it and you taste it, ooh, ooh, su, 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 I can't eat it. So you pour water in it and then you say, oh, I can take it now. It loses its effect, it loses its power. It loses its effect as a hyokkaga gopso jujanayom, right? So we don't want things mixed. And when we talk about the word of God, we want the pure word of God. Just because something looks like it's silver doesn't mean it's silver. Ungachi singingo man unida anyeo, right? Singingo no anyeo, right? Really, silver. Nothing mixed. That's what we want. 
Really podoju, really wine, not mixed with water. Well, that's like the word of God. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying, whatever is pure. And he's referring, we, since we've tied everything else to the word of God, this is what he's, he's asking the, the, the believers at Philippi to think on. Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, lovely, whatever is lovely. Do you know, each one of these things, if you would allow me to be poetic, I guess, if you will, or whatever you want to call it. What does the Lord Jesus say about himself? Does he say that he's pure? He says he's single, right? He's single. He has one. He and the Father are one. Not mixed with anything else. One. Hmm? Does the Lord Jesus say of himself that he is true? Does the Lord Jesus say of himself, I am true? Yes. Yes. I am the truth. That's what he says about himself. Is the Lord Jesus noble? Yes. Oh, yes. Is the Lord Jesus right? Is the Lord Jesus lovely? Yes, indeed. Is the Lord Jesus admirable? What does admirable mean, brother? Mm. Yes, he is. He is someone to be admired. All of these things that the apostle is bringing out are those very things that the Lord Jesus personified. What does that mean, personified? Person. What is person? Person. Person. Mm. Personified. Personified. Mm. Uh, so, these characteristics are Jesus' characteristics. These are his characteristics, and he personified them. He made them real as a person. He was personally right? He was truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? I am. This is what he was saying. He personified. He personified these characteristics so that we could look at them. Ah, 그것이 바로 lovely예요. 그것이 바로 true입니다. 그것이 바로 noble입니다. 그것이 바로 That's where we looked at him and we saw we saw him. We saw what admirable was. We saw what pure was. We saw what right was. We saw what true was. And now, my brothers and sisters, he says, if ever, anything is excellent, 훌륭하다, right? If there is anything excellent, well, was the Lord Jesus excellent? Yes. What does excellent mean? Excellent. Mm. Yes, for instance, here's the standard. Well, here's the Lord Jesus. He's above the standards. He has exceeded or excelled the standard. He is beyond the standard, right? Yeah. He's excellent in every way. How about praiseworthy? Praiseworthy. He deserves to be praised. He deserves to be praised. He deserves to be praised. All of these things, if we were to look at them and, and we were to take them and look at them as, as, as a person, they would be the characteristics or the traits of the Lord Jesus. And so the Apostle Paul, what he's trying to get us to do is look at, keep our hearts and our minds stayed on the Lord Jesus. So he says in verse 9, he says, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. What is that? Live up. Live up. Live up to what has been taught. Yes, 
very important. I know that in many places I have poured out my heart in teaching, you know, and, and this is not this is not charang hanin ge anigo. But when I'm preaching the word of God, I'm preaching it with all my heart, because it's a battle, it's a war. This isn't a game. Iko changdang chining ge anigo. This is real, and it's and it's really important. And so if I preach something from the word of God, and you hear it in this year, and you throw it out in this year, I say to myself, don't they know how serious this is? Iko ormana. Don't you know how important this is? So it is very important. So the Apostle Paul, he's saying, whatever you've heard from me, whatever you've learned from me, put it into practice. Right? Live it out in your lives. So he says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice. What is practice in this sense? Exercise. Shirsup, would you say in Korean? Shirsup. Would you say Korean would be shirsup, right? Shirsup. Right? Put it into practice. 듣기만 하면 되는 게 아니다. 듣고 속 그대로 살아라 하는 거예요, right? Live it out in your lives, right? And he says in verse 10, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. 무슨 말이요? I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last 결론이 너희들이 나한테 있는 관심 다시 나타나게끔 했어. You have showed once again, finally, that you're still concerned. 아직도 나한테 관심이 있다는 거는 너무나 고맙다 생각하는 거예요. He's so thankful, right? I, I, and I, he's rejoicing that you are once again showing concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. 그런 관심 있다는 거 보여줄 수 있는 기회가 없을 뿐이다. He's telling them, but I know you have been concerned for me, but I rejoiced when I saw it. Do you know sometimes I get a letter from my home assembly, 미국에서, 어떤 노자매가, 그냥, hi Tim, I'm thinking about you, I just want to let you know we miss you, we love you, and we're praying for you. 가끔 가다가 거기다가 십불짜리 하나 넣어줘요. 너무 고마워요. So thankful. More than the 십불짜리 넣는 거, 그것도 고맙기는 하지만 the reality is she's thinking of us. 관심 있다는 거예요. 생각하고 있다. 기도하고 있다. 관심 있다는 거예요. 너무나 기뻐해요. 나안 잊어버려서. You, you didn't forget about me. So I understand the apostle's heart when he says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. I understand. Verse 11, he says, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Let's go back and read verses 11 uh, through... Uh, Let's read 11 all the way to the end of the chapter, or to, the, to verse 20. Uh, from 11 to 20, let's read. Okay, ready, let's read. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, 
Not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches, or yes, you're right, glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So the Apostle Paul here is taking up uh, uh, the uh, uh, t taking up the opportunity to express his thanks for the church at Philippi having helped him, and he says, "I am not saying this because I am in need." 내가 궁핍해서 I am because I am need. 내가 너희들이 보내 주는 거를 꼭 필요해서 얘기하는 게 아니다. Because he has learned to be content. What does it mean to be content? Manjok, satisfied. Or I think you might say chajok hada, to be content, right? In regardless of his circumstances, he has learned to be content. So he's not encouraging the Philippian church to give anything to him because he is in need. Because truly God meets the needs of all his, all his people. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, I am not saying this because I am need, for I have learned to be content. And in verse 12 he says, I know what it is to be in need. What is that? I know what it is to be in need. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> right? I know what it is to be in need. Or pichan hada, right? Pichan. And he says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. right? He knows what it is like to have plenty. He says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. The Apostle Paul says, I know what it's like. I've learned how to be content in any of those situations. So I'm not saying to you, gimme, 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 because I want. I'm saying that when there is opportunity for you to help, you help that person, not because that person can reward you back or pay you back, but that you might be, there might be something credited to your account. What kind of an account? Your bank account? No. What kind of an account? Yes, yes, right? The one to whom we have to answer one day. How is it you lived your life? How did you live with the resources that I gave you? What did you do with them? And we'll have to give an answer. And there will be things that are credited to us. You did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. I'm, I'm ready to pay. <laughs> I'm ready to pay. And so he says, I wanted this to be on your, con your account. He says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. This in English we say sometimes, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, right? We can do all things through Christ. But we need to remember that what the apostle is talking about is, is in context. He's talking about having, having plenty or being in need. So he's saying, I can do all things in Christ. He doesn't mean that he can flap his arms and fly like a bird. That's not what he's saying, right? It doesn't mean that he can walk in the street and a car hit him and not get hurt. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying, I can do all things in Christ. I can be in need and still be content. I can have plenty and still be content. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, right? Who strengthens me. And so this is what the Apostle Paul is talking about here. And in verse 14, he says, Yet it was good for you to share in my troubles. Ne oryo mi, right? That you helped me in my troubles. This is good for you. Mm. And I want to I say something, that in, in God's economy, 
When we help one another, we help ourselves. Do, do you understand? There's a principle applied. Whenever we help one another, there is a mutual benefit to all of us. Whenever we hold back and don't help one another, it's to our mutual detriment. What is detriment? Loss. It's the same thing as saying loss. That's right, right? So if we help one another, we're mutually blessed. 봄사에 축복 받는 거잖아요. But when we don't help, 봄사에 축복 반대적은 뭐예요? 저 저자 좀 너무 강 너무 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 커 그만 너무 커요. Yeah, but the but the really it's it's not it's not a blessing, it's a hurt. Uh? It's a hurt. 손해 본다, 손해 본다. 서로 도와주면은 서로가 봄사에 축복 축복이 돼요. 도와주지 않으면은 서로 손해요. Everyone loses, right? Do you know sometimes uh, it, you've heard the story of the sower, the one who sows a lot of seed, he reaps a lot. 씨를 많이 풀려야. 거둘 때는 많이 거둡다. 어? 한국 사람도 그런 말은 있지. 심는 거대로 거둡다. 그렇게 말을 하죠. Right? Right? And so it is the principle that the Apostle Paul is teaching here. It's the principle of giving. One of the things that sets Christians apart from any other is the fact that we give. We give. That's what we do. We love to give. What? The Lord, the, the Lord Jesus himself says it is better to what? Give than to what? Receive. It's better to give than to receive. Now we like receiving more than we like giving sometimes. But I can tell you, it's a blessing both ways, to both give and to receive. You cannot, 불가능하다는 거는 하늘님보다 더 많이 줄 수가 없습니다. You cannot give more than God. And He doesn't forget anything you've given. He never forgets. Right? And so he says, it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. What is the Apostle Paul saying? Is he saying, those other churches are stingy. Is he saying those other churches are bad? No, he's not saying that. He's saying, in reality though, you've had a special place in my heart because you care for me and you show it physically, you show it tangibly. You show it not only in 느낌, not only in 감정, but in, in reality, 실상, right? 사실상, right? You show it to me in reality, and so the Apostle Paul holds them in high regard. 아주 높게 생각하잖아요. He holds them in high regard because they shared with him. They helped him. Do you know, I will tell you that there are plenty of missionaries who are in the field right now, some from Korea who are in Africa, who are in Papua New Guinea, who are in China, who are in Mongolia, who are in uh, places in the former Soviet Union, they're all over the place. Wouldn't it be a nice Sunday school project if each one of you picked a, picked a country and you said, this month we're going to write a letter to somebody in Cambodia, Vietnam, China, somewhere, and just write a Sunday school letter. Have your students who are in Sunday school write the letter, right? 성교사님, 안녕하십니까, 건강하십니까. It can be any kind of a little letter. I will tell you, it will bring joy to their heart. Maybe you could even send a picture of your Sunday school class. Let him know. We've got you on our board. We've got you on our map. We're showing the children that there's somebody from Korea who is in Mongolia or China or Africa who's sharing the gospel. It's good. It's good work. It's good to teach the, the children the same thing. It's a good idea. Anyways, just food for thought. So the Apostle Paul says, you were the only church that had fellowship with me in this regard, in the matter of giving and receiving. 
You were the only ones. He says, for even, in verse 16, for even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid. How many times? Again and again. Again and again. Let me ask you, did the church at Philippi, was he commended from the church at Philippi? Philippi 교회가 사도 바울 파송했습니까? No. No. Sometimes in our churches we get the wrong idea and we say 우리 파송한 선교사만 도와주겠습니다. Wrong idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. What we need to do is trust the Lord to, to show us who we should have fellowship with. He'll put it on your heart. But we need to have an idea. I'll give you an example. In, in our little assembly back in the United States, they have names, and, they, and the names are on a list that just keeps going over and over. And so at a certain time in a month, they have a missionary who they want to help. And what they do is they take 10% of that month's sweep, kumur, and they send it to that missionary. And what they do is they take 그 11조를, 10%, the, the tithe of the church, right? What they, in their minds, they're calling the 10% of their total collection. They take that and they divide it in half and they send half to one and half to the other. The point is, they're helping. But they're helping and they're doing it according to plan. It's good to do. It's good to do. God will bless you for it. God will bless you for it. So the Apostle Paul says once again, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. And he says in verse 17, not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what might be credited to your account. You know, the Apostle Paul, he, he's trying to enforce or reinforce the idea, you cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. And God does not forget anything that you do for his, uh, for his cause and to the furtherance of the gospel. In verse 18, he says, I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. Right? He says, when you do this, God is pleased. Right? You know, do you know when we become Christians, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we're born again or born from above, one of the joys that we have is pleasing the Lord. Why? He's the Lord, right? He loved us and He gave us life. And so we want to please Him. That's the difference between us and the world. The world doesn't care about Jesus Christ. Not to us. That's Jesus Christ. He's the one who loved me and gave himself for me and died on the cross of Calvary that I might have life. Oh, I want to make him happy. How can I make you happy, Lord? Love one another. Right? You make him happy by loving one another. They are a fragrant offering, acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. You know, do you think that God really smells this? No, this is Old Testament terminology, right? Old Testament terminology. The Apostle Paul is talking about sacrifices in the temple. They had hyang, right? They would have hyang and they would offer up prayers with incense, right? And so it's a visual. He's creating a visual in their minds of the sacrifice, right, in the temple. A fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And verse 19, And my God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? 
19절 yeah. 믿습니까? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yes, indeed. 왜 그대로 안 살아? <웃음> Why do we worry then? Why do we worry? I will tell you why. We don't trust him. No. We don't trust. We trust him with our salvation, but not with our money. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I trust you with my eternal soul, but not with my wallet. <laughs> Ooh. No. I trust you with my wife and with my children and their salvation, but not with my tongjang. No, 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 no. We must trust him all the way in everything. Because the promise he has made, and he does not lie, is he will meet all your needs. He will meet all your needs. According to what? Meet all his needs according to his pizza card? According to his glorious riches. His glorious riches. 보통 제보 아니에요. 보통 제보 아닙니다. 우리 주 예수 그리스도는. He has everything. He's not, he's not poor. He's rich. He can meet the needs of all his people. But I want you to note that it says needs. I want you to note that it says needs. What are your needs, my brothers and sisters? What are your needs? Huh? Sometimes we think we need a lot of things. But do you know what we really need? We need we. We need chic and we need to angry. Anya? We need what? We chic too, Animnika? We chic too. Ah. Oh, we need we, we need chic, we need you. Good more out of the hang of modern day. We chic too. He's promised us these things. And he says, with food and clothing, there, there would be content. Look at the lily of the field. It doesn't labor, it doesn't toil, and yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as one of these. Which one of you, taking thought, can add one inch to his height? Can't do it. Can't do it. 염려할 필요가 없습니다. Right? So, God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus, 두려워하지 말고 모든 필요함 제공한다고 약속했습니다. He will meet all, 고급한다고. Do you say 제공하다? What do you say? <laughs> 어떻게 표현하면 되겠습니까? He will meet all your needs. 모든 필요함을 yeah. 음. 제공한다? 공급하다? Yeah. 공급하다? Uh, yeah. So, and in verse 20 he says, To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. To our God and what? What was that next word? Father. Father. To our God and our Father. Our Father. You know, sometimes I think we forget or we don't really appreciate what it means that God is our Father. What does it mean? We are so Hmm. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It's an amazing thought. Never lose the wonder of that thought. You who were rebels, you who were guilty of treason in the highest order, God has forgiven you. Not only forgiven you and said, 그래, 용서하기는 하지만은 골피기 싫어, 오지 마. No. Not only has he forgiven you, but he loves you and he wants you to be close to him. So the Apostle Paul, in just an exclamation of 
joy to God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings. Let's do that. Let's read from 21 until the end. Let's read together, starting in verse 21. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. So the Apostle Paul, now in conclusion, he is saying, greet all the saints in Christ Jesus, right? Do you know, when he is saying that, greet all the saints, what does saints mean? Saints. Sangdo. Sangdo. How did you become a saint? Are you happy that God has made you a saint? Yes, but, but sometimes when we talk to people, right, what do you think, you're a saint, right? Yes. Yamazo, I am. Not by my own holiness, not by my own effort, but by God's wonderful work. A saint. Do you know the Roman Catholic Church, they like to think that they're the ones who have the monopoly on making people saints. And they say, did they do a miracle? Did, did, did anybody witness the miracle? Have they done good things? Have they done this? Have they done that? And if they have, then we will make them a saint. And we'll do this. We we'll say, now you are a saint. Oh, but no. God says, the moment you believe in my son, the Lord Jesus, and receive him as Lord and Savior, and are born, not by the will of flesh, but born from above, by the water, by the Spirit, then you are a saint. It's very special. It's very special, right? Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. They say Munan, right? Munan. Huh? They send greetings. They want to let you know we're doing fine. We're doing fine. All the saints send you greetings. All the saints. What was the temple called, brother? No, no, no. The, the temple in Israel. What was it called? In, in, in Korean. Songjeon, yes. How about uh, the tabernacle? Tabernacle. How about um, sanctification? Mm. Yeah. You notice that there's a common word there, right? What is that common? Saint, 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 saint. Sanctuary. Saint. It's the same word. Hagios in Greek. It's the same word. And so you and I, who have been made saints, made saints, this is a, this is a, an amazing thing that you and I should be called saints. Not by the power of man, not by an organization, but by the living God. Mm, the wonder of it. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Now, let me ask you something. Who is Caesar? The Roman soldier. The Roman soldier. Caesar was a Kesaga. He's the king. Pyongsa? Yes. Caesar was the Roman king. Yeah. He's the Roman king. Yeah. Caesar. He actually believed himself to be God. Worship him, right? They told him to, they wanted everybody to worship him. Well, you see, I don't know if you noticed something interesting there, but it says, all the saints send you greetings. 
특별하게, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. 회사 집 내에 있는 성도들. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that Caesar was trying to really stamp out Christianity? He was in competition. You can't worship Christ and call him king. I'm king. Mm. So he was arresting Paul. And he was going to ultimately execute Paul. But while Paul was in his house preaching and teaching and sharing the gospel, the very servants of Caesar trusted in Christ and became saints. 우리 하나님, 우리 주 예수 그리스도, 매력적이에요. 놀라운 분. Amazing. The worst enemy is now made a saint. Yes. It's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. So, the last verse, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. What does grace mean? Yeah, une in Korean. But what does it mean? What does it mean? I have no right to be receive some receive something. Received it by grace, right? Right. But. Did you know that the Greek word for grace, it comes from a word called charis, charis. And that's how we get grace, charis, right? Charis, right? Grace. Well, you know, uh, have you heard the term charismatic? Charismatic. In, uh, in simple terms, Grace is not something that's powerless. Grace is powerful. Grace is powerful. Sometimes when we think of grace, we think of it as weakness. But grace is powerful. <coughs> How were you saved, sister? How were you saved? By grace. That's not weak. If God could save you by grace, what's more amazing, He saved me by grace. Grace is powerful. But sometimes I think when we talk about grace, we think it means a surrender. It's not surrender. It's power. And it's power visualized. The power. 주 예수 크리스도의 매력. 주 예수 크리스도의 grace. The beauty. The power. The presence of Jesus Christ be with you. 그레이스라는 거는 무슨 뭐 냄새? No, it's overwhelming. It's powerful. We must never let the word grace seem like it's weak. The word grace it implies great power. You see, it was grace, really amazing grace, that saved a wretch like me. It's amazing. You see, when the Lord Jesus said, Tim Stafford, you can be saved if you come to me. By grace, I will give you salvation if you believe in me. He had every right to kill me. He had every right to send me to hell forever. He had every right to do it. But it took great power. 
to save a wretch like me, to bring me in to Christ Jesus. And now, the power that's going on right now in the process of sanctification, to take a rebel heart and change it by the grace of God. You see, we're saved by grace. We're being sanctified by grace. grace. One day, one day, we will be in the presence of God by grace. Grace is powerful. Don't let it enter your mind that grace is some weak attitude of surrender. No. It's a victorious cry. Grace. It has been said, and I will leave you with this thought, grace. G stands for God. R stands for riches. A stands for at. C stands for Christ. E stands for expense. So if you were to look at grace as an acronym, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Christ paid the price for us to have the riches of God. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace. G-R-A-C-E. It's how you've been saved. So now we're at the end of our time. I want to thank you very much for being so faithful to come out on Sunday evening to study. Uh, next week when we meet, we're going to have uh, a, little, a little party, I guess. And it will be at, we'll meet at 5 o'clock here, yes. Yes. like a normal time. And we'll have a little ceremony here. Are we going to eat here as well? Yes. Okay. So it's, it's on next week.